Greetings, everyone. Hope all of you are having an absolutely fantastic day. We're back again with more Black Geyser content. And this time I wanted to dive into the classes that are available in the game. I know many of you are purchasing the game today. and You're probably trying to figure out what your first playthrough is going to be like. Hopefully there'll be some information in this video that will help you figure out how to roll your character. We're going to use human throughout this video because they are the only race that is able to use all the classes that are in the game. I will have a separate video at some point that will break down all the races and how attributes work in this game as well. But for now, let's go ahead and stick to classes. And the first one is cleric. Now clerics cannot use heavy armor. So the heaviest armor they can use is medium. They're proficient with a bunch of different weapons. And honestly, in my opinion, it doesn't matter which one you use. It's just all a matter of whether you want to be up front or at ranged. They all have unique versions. They can be bought in stores. They can be looted off enemies. So it's just all up to your play style. Now, Claire's get a plus two focus to their racial base, which is important for them and spellcasters in general, because this game likes to put you in a lot of different situations where you're automatically up close to enemies before you can um, use any of your buffs. And oftentimes enemies might even get a free hit against a spellcaster before they can really do anything. So having focus ensures that you're able to cast your spells even when you have a negative debuff on you or when you're being attacked. And especially if you're going to have your cleric up front, that's going to be very, very important for her. Plus one to starting brewing and drying, which is essentially the crafting that is in the game. I definitely feel like you should be focusing on brewing and drying. More than likely, you have a character on the team who's going to be much more proficient in it and will have a higher starting bonus but it doesn't hurt to have another person who is able to do it as well. So this is kind of nice. And then all the classes will have a list of resistances that they have. Honestly, if it's only a couple listed for the class, I don't feel like it means that much. There are a lot of different categories that have to be resisted. So she is resisted to arousal and illusion and manipulation, but there's also pulse and blow. There's stabbing. There's just a bunch of different uh, types. So if the class isn't resisting, at least I'd say four of those categories, then I would say it's a wash. It doesn't matter because there's such a large variety of enemies that you face. If you don't have a wide swath of things that you're naturally resistant to, then I don't feel like it's an overwhelming reason to pick the class. More than likely, what you'll need to focus on is brewing and drying so that your upfront fighters have the potions and powders they need in order to be able to survive. And then finally, the cleric gets a percentage increase to the healing she can do with spells, which is obviously fantastic. So all of this together, the cleric can be a very solid off tank with her medium armor and the spells that she's going to get that is going to make her tankier. She's able to heal the party and she's able to do a little bit of damage with this list of weapons she has available. She does not get a bonus to weapon skills, and so she's not going to be proficient with as many different weapons the way some other classes can, but she is definitely someone who can be a very, very nice part of your party and help make sure that everybody's prepared for their encounters. Next up, we have Convoker, which is actually the class that I rolled with, for my playthrough thus far, and I have not regretted it at all. They're essentially summoners, uh, pure summoners, and they're just great, great, great in the game. So you're able to wear light armor if your supernatural attribute is greater than two. And I definitely recommend you go ahead and do that because like I said, this game loves to have enemies get the jump on you while you're traveling around the world map. And oftentimes you'll be right in front of the fight. So having a little bit more protection on your spellcaster is definitely a good thing. 
same list of weapons available as the cleric and same deal as before the convoker isn't going to be all that great with weapons however you're going to get that plus two focus but you'll also get a plus three to intelligence which is going to increase the amount of spell slots your summoner has and then as you level up your summon creatures will get more health they'll be able to do more damage as well and their duration is going to increase also as you increase in level the potency of even your lower level summoning spells will increase as well so at level one a level one summoning spell might only summon one creature but then by level seven that same spell will summon two or three creatures so the convoker can really really Fill up the battlefield with all of the summoned creatures that are at her disposal. And then, of course, you get an increase to crafting. So my character is very good at being able to do that. And you get a plus five to learning and research, which is your ability to understand recipes and scrolls. So the convoker, just like a wizard, can copy spells from scrolls that she'll have available even if it's higher level, she'll then be able to select that power when she gets to that level and she won't have to manually select it. So just really, really great stuff all the way around. Definitely feel like you cannot go wrong with this class. Next up is Druid. So Druids can only wear robes by default, but if you put one in Supernatural, which I definitely recommend you do, she will be able to wear light armor. She's got a wider variety of weapons that she can use and she cannot cast unnatural spells, which are essentially necromancy spells, while also she cannot wear armor or wield weapons that are made of metal. So it's all about wood and nature here. And there actually is a line of nature spells in the game. Now she gets a couple of resistances, but what's really nice is the additional damage she gets to animated undead and restless undead. There is a ton of undead creatures in the game thus far, and some of them are really, really nasty. So to see that increase, that's definitely going to be useful for you. And then she also gets an increase to the duration and healing that can be done by spells. So you can use your druid as the main healer for your um, party instead of the cleric, if you so choose really, really nice addition. And then of course she does have that plus four to brewing and drying. So she can be the one creating your powders and potions. If that's what you would prefer. Next up is fighter another absolutely fantastic class. So the fighter can wear any physical weapon and she can wield any weapon. But the really nice thing here is this plus two weapon skill points per level. So basically the way it works is to figure out whether or not you're really good with a weapon. Um, one, you have to actually be able to wield it. Two, you want to make sure that you have the attributes necessary in order to wield it properly. So in this case, she has a plus two to physique, which is going to increase the amount of damage she's able to do with it. And then dexterity determines how accurate you are with that weapon. But then under skills, there's a whole list of different weapon categories such as war axes or hammers or spears and halberds, things of that nature. Now, usually in a game, you have to take several different feats in order to be really, really good at a weapon. And so therefore it's difficult to be good with more than one weapon in one playthrough, but that's not the way it works in Black Geyser. So in Black Geyser, as long as you have your attributes set up, and your class allows you to wield that weapon, your proficiency is determined by skills. And the max amount of skill you can have in a weapon is 15. So therefore, as a fighter, you can actually max out multiple categories of weapons, giving you the flexibility to pick and choose different ones based on the situation. So I have been able to play around with fighter. You get a party member who's a fighter, He's, I think he's level nine right now, and he has almost maxed three different categories of weapons, 
which again means even though I started him in war axes, if he got a large sword that I felt like was really, really nice and better than a war axe, I could switch them out with no problem, lose absolutely nothing. So fighter gives you a lot of flexibility about what kind of martial character you want to be. So you'll see they get a large um, damage increase when using two-handed weapons that is cut in half when you're using one-handed weapons. However, the trade-off is if you're using a one-handed weapon, you're also going to automatically get a chance to taunt targets while you're holding that weapon. So automatically while he's roaming around, axe in one hand, shield in the other, Every time he's swinging, he's also trying to taunt enemies around him to focus on him. It's just a very, very great, very solid class. Had a lot of fun putting this together. Next up is Highlander. Highlander cannot wear heavy armor, but they can wield any weapon, which honestly, I don't think is relevant because they get huge boosts when you're using war clubs and hammers in damage and in the chance to cause a knockdown. So it's pretty obvious that is the category of weapon you are supposed to stick with. Now, even though they can't wear heavy armor, they get a huge list of things that they're resistant to that increases over time. So they're actually can be very, very tanky characters if that's what you want. And then they don't get the plus two to weapon skills that the fighter gets. But again, I don't think it matters because there's really only one category that they're going to be going for anyway. So this plus one actually helps tremendously to be able to max out war clubs and hammers as soon as possible and make the most out of these damage and knockdown buffs that you're going to get. So overall, great, great class and someone that you could use right up front if you so choose. Next up is Necromancer, which honestly are a lot like Convokers, except that Convokers basically summon anything. They might summon uh, spiders or wolves or skeletons, whatever they choose, whereas Necromancers are going to focus on the undead. So you get that uh, buff to focus, you get the bonus to intelligence, brewing and drying, learning and research. Those are all important for the reasons we've already stated. And then they get an increase to the damage dealt by summoning creatures, just like Convokers, and health, just like Convokers as well. However, they also get an increase to the damage dealt by damage over time effects. So while Convokers strictly deal in summoning, Necromancers have a little bit of variety in what they do, where they can summon the undead or also try to deal direct damage. All right, next up is Ranger. Rangers cannot wear heavy armor. They can wield any weapon and they gain spells at level four. I have not had an opportunity to use this class yet, so I can't tell you what specific type of spells that they get, unfortunately. But they do get a plus two to physique, helping them to deal more damage with physical attacks, and plus one to dexterity, making their physical attacks more accurate, along with the plus one to charisma. Now, what's really nice, in my opinion, is, of course, they get the increase in damage to undead, but then they also get an increase to damage to machineries. I don't believe I faced a machinery yet. And again, I'm 20, 25 hours into the game. So I'm going to venture to say that machineries are late game enemies. And that means that the ranger has a section here that really gives them a damage boost against what I assume are gonna be some of the hardest enemies in the game. Of course, on the flip side, I've went 20 hours not ever needing this. So your mileage may vary about whether or not that makes you want to use this class more, but definitely something to keep in mind. Obviously the Ranger gets a damage boost if you're using bows and arrows or slings and fusta balls. And again, both of these categories are plentiful in the game. Next up is Shaman. They can wear light armor and robes. They've got a few weapons that they're able to use. They get a plus three to supernatural automatically. And I believe that's the largest buff any class provides in the game. So supernatural is going to give you some points that you can allocate 
for defense against magic powers or basically elemental magic powers. So defense against cold, heat, things of that nature. And you have to have rankings in Supernatural in, able, in order to be able to allocate those type of points in the attribute section. They are going to get an increase to damage with rods and staves, and they get an increase to damage to necromancers, which there are plenty of in the game. Part of the reason you have to deal with so many undead is because you keep on having to deal with necromancers who are raising the undead to fight against you. And he also gets an increase to the duration of the spells and increased health for summoned creatures. So a little bit of a summoner, little bit of some other things. Shaman is always kind of weird. This game is no exception. Spellweaver is essentially the wizards of the game. So they can only wear robes unless you give them a little bit of supernatural and then they have, they can use light armor and they're going to start with buffs in focus, intelligence, brewing and drying, learning and research. And this all makes a ton of sense. Spellweavers are basically, if great if you want to use the type of mage that has a wide variety of powers. So Convoker obviously is just for summoning. Necromancers, mainly summoning undead, little bit of damage over time. Uh, you will get to Winter Mage soon, which is all about cold spells. But if you just want to be able to throw out whatever you feel like at any particular time, Spellweaver is going to allow you to do that. And they can use some healing spells as well. So it's for those who want variety, which is why the list here is so general as opposed to some of the other classes that you've seen. I, I have used a party member who is a spell weaver. She's absolutely awesome. In fact, I think she's the only person I've seen who got access to fireball, which can be a very effective spell. I mean, come on now, <laughs> who doesn't want to be able to throw out big balls of fire? So if that's your thing, this is definitely something you want to do. Swindlers. They can only wear light armor. They get a plus one to dexterity and focus, but the real claim to fame is the plus two to charisma combined with the plus five to bargain and persuasion. Makes them excellent characters for trying to persuade other people. They get an increase to damage with throwing weapons and small blades, but when it comes to damage, the real kicker is down here. If you're playing the type of team that's going to put a lot of status effects on enemies, Swindler is going to be a great addition because whether you're stunning enemies, pacifying them, making them bleed, dissolving them, the Swindler is going to be great to follow up and do some fantastic additional damage. They also get a plus one class skill point. So basically, when you look at the skills section, there are some skills that are specific to the class you're running at that time. And so she's going to get to choose an additional skill point when she's able to choose skills, which is very nice because swindlers are able to disarm traps and they're able to pick locks. So with this plus one, she's going to be able to level up both on each level up, which is definitely going to help you. Next up is Templars. They can wear any physical armor, they can wield any weapon, and they gain spells at level four. Haven't played with the Templar yet, so I can't tell you what type of spells that they gain. They're gonna get that plus two to physique, which helps them do more damage, and that plus one to focus, so they can cast their spells while they're right up front. And then they get the plus one to um, charisma. Again, you face a lot of undead, so this increase to damage against undead is really nice. And then they have four different resistances, resistant categories on their class. So that's actually really, really nice and helps them be great tanks. Next up is Thief. A lot of this is going to look similar to Swindler, except that they forego the buffs that were specifically about persuasion and instead you're going to get an additional plus one to dexterity and plus one to focus, which is going to help more in combat, whether you're at ranged or you're up close with daggers. They still get the increase of the damage against um, certain debuffs you put on targets, which is fantastic, and still get that plus one class skill point per level. 
And then finally at the bottom, we have Winter Mage. They can wear light armor if you boost their supernatural level slightly. And then they're going to get bonuses to focus, intelligence, brewing and drying, and learning and research, all of which is fantastic. They've got a couple of resistances. Obviously, they would be more resistant to cold. But they also get a bonus to cold damage that is dealt. And there are some really nice cold damage spells in the game. So this can be very beneficial to you. And that is the complete list of classes that are currently available in the game. Hope you all found value in this and it helped you figure out which class you would like to run with first. If you have any questions about the information I provided, please, by all means, just comment below. I answer all of my comments and I'd be absolutely happy to help. And regardless of what character you decide to run, I hope you all end up having a fantastic time with the game. Hope all of you enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave me a like down below, share this content, and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I will see you all in the next video. Take care.